Welcome to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. It is the Permco Superbikes at Mid-Ohio. It is the seventh round of this 10th anniversary season of the Moto America Championship. And it is time now for the Steel Commander Superbike category to hit the racetrack for qualifying here at Mid-Ohio for the first time in 10 years. It might be a Friday here in Lexington, Ohio, but we certainly have the fans that have come out in droves already. There's a great crowd on hand this early on in this weekend. And you can see all the fans out there that were waving hello to to you. Welcome into the broadcast booth now. I'm Jamie Howe, joined by, by Roger Hayden. And Roger, we welcome in our, our audience with this bonus coverage for the YouTube crowd that's out there watching along with us this afternoon. And we've had some great qualifying so far. Yeah, great qualifying. Everybody's been really close, so it's been really cool. Super Sport. Two guys have kind of separated themselves this season, but you go back to that first qualifier there, there was six people really close, so looking forward to it. If you look at the entry list for the Steel Commander Superbike category, you know, there are five riders that are still mathematically in it. Let's take a look back four weeks ago. This is back at WeatherTech Raceway. Yeah, Ken, great start by Ken Boyer, and we was thinking maybe early on in this race we might see him disappear like he did the first day. But Ken Peterson, Josh Heron, and also Sean Dillon Kelly worked their way toward the front. You see Sean making a move into the course here. That was a great pass. Look at Josh Heron into turn 11. He knew Cam Bobier had a little bit of pace. He wanted to get out front. Sean Dillon Kelly also wanted to throw his name in the hat. As the laps were winding down, it was getting a little dicey there between the two BMW riders. They're not teammates, but while they were doing that, it was just able enough for Josh Heron to be able to pull away a little bit, able to get the win, but it was a great rider. Four, four guys there fighting it out, and Josh Heron was able to extend his point sweep. And you take a look at the championship points as they sit coming into this weekend. And for Josh Heron, now has a little bit of a pad there over the rest of the field. It's 15 points separating himself and Jake Gagne in the defense of his championship. Yeah, and, and Jake, let's see what happens there, the rest of the year. But Bobby Fong's been riding great. He's within a race. Cam Peterson, 27 back. And uh, I think the run that we're looking for is the guy in fifth, Cam Bobier. Is he going to be able to go on a run? these last three races and close that gap. For Cameron Bobier, if you weren't with us for the entire season, he did have to sit out a couple of races to recover from injury. He is back now. That's why you see the deficit, and he's trying to just slowly chip away at it race by race. There's a third member of our broadcast team here this weekend. Michael Hill is down on pit lane. Michael. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, great to be back on the uh, broadcast team for this weekend. And, of course, also great for the fans is the return of the 54, Richie Escalante. He'd been replaced following an injury earlier this season by Xavi Forrest. Forrest back in Europe now, and we, of course, are graced with the uh, return of Richie Escalante. To be fair, he's had a pretty good return, hasn't he? He was well inside the top ten yesterday. Uh, it's always going to be a bit of a difficult ask, isn't it, when you've had pretty much a whole season, uh, not after uh, being on the bike. He's had very, very little seat time. Uh, since that uh, incident earlier in the year but he is back and doing well one of the riders as well that we are going to see uh, where there was a test day yesterday and uh, Cameron Peterson uh, had a very very uh, spectacular crash uh, managed to limp away the good news is he's had some checks everything is okay so we do see the 45 back on track although a little bit battered and bruised and we do see the return of Escalante and just to your point uh, uh, there Jamie regarding Cameron Bobier oh what it could have been for Cameron Bobier had he not been injured at Road America but there's still seven races left 25 points for each particular race victory Bobier is not out of this one although at the moment the momentum is with Josh Herrin and with the Warhorse SB, uh, HSBK Ducati Yes, he certainly does have a lot of momentum in his head down, looking towards the finishing out this championship strong is Josh Heron. But out on the racetrack right now, you see Cameron Bobier on that number six, that BMW from Tyler Cycles. And he came back over into the Moto America paddock uh, to go for another championship, Roger. He spent a couple of years over in Europe, and he wanted to come back over here. And unfortunately, he had to sit out those races. But the last couple, he's, he's been right there ready to make up those points yeah and it just this year you know just you can say with him on that uh, bike for the second time going back to the races cam bobier has been really tough unfortunately for him he had that crash at road america and tried to come back at the ridge even though he he was able to race but wasn't able to get very good results with the weather and came back really quick and broken heel it's impressive that he's able to even come back before laguna sake and able to get a win he did win at the first race at Laguna, uh, was able to finish on the podium in that second race. Take a look at what happened this morning. Yeah, just right there, loses the front end. Just not really a big tumble, 
just the grass there, he's able to just slide. And, you know, that's kind of what you're, you're aiming is not to flip whenever you crash like that. So Cam Bovier, we've seen a couple crashes out of Cam this year. We haven't seen a lot uh, previously, but I just feel like that this class has been elevated a lot and he's pushing the limit. I think back to the ridge when he did come back from, from injury that first weekend and he was riding differently in defense of his ankle and, and trying to let it continue healing. And we saw him go over a couple of times there as well. As we look at the rest of the field here, see the number 76 of, of Loris Baz leading his teammate, the number two, that is our championship points leader, Josh Heron. Those two Ducatis, we now know they're going to be back out on the racetrack as a factory team again next year. So great growth in the Ducati organization. This is the first year that we've had two Ducatis out on the grid at each round of the championship so certainly are, are diving in deep and they want to keep going with this program yeah it was great to see them make that announcement at Laguna signing on for five more years to have Ducati in the paddock that's just great two rider team you can see what it's did with with Josh as well and that team have getting double the data throughout the weekend uh, two teammates that really get along well and Loris has been getting closer to the front as the, the races of the last couple races he's really starting to you know, moving the Dunlop tires, is, it's hard to find the confidence in tires when he's been, you know, World Superbike, something totally different. If you're joining along with us on YouTube right now, and one thing that you did miss was the preview show that we had this morning exclusively on Moto America Live Plus. J Josh Heron was one of the guests that we had on there uh, across the field. and. He said some things about the championship, Roger. One of them that stood out to me was that he has a home right now. He has a family with him at, over at HSBK Racing. And to him, that's made the biggest difference in being able to go for this title. Yeah, he loves his team, and, you know, they, they support him through, through everything. And I think for Josh Heron, he's having fun, and he's able to come here and be himself and, and have fun on social media and do some of those other things where I know some previous teams might not, you know, kind of frown upon that. And you can just see... Every time I walk by that, that team, Josh Heron is smiling and laughing. It doesn't matter if it's the beginning of the day, toward the end. And uh, for Josh, it's really shown on the racetrack too. It makes a huge difference when you go to a team and you look forward to seeing them, those guys on the weekend. Y'all have a good time and you have fun. It's serious when you need to be, but it really does make a huge difference. The season that he's had so far that's put him in the championship lead right now. He has three wins. He's been on the podium seven times, so he's consistently been right there. And and for Josh, you know, he's 34 years old now, and he says one of the things that he's learned is that he has to always be thinking about the championship. You've got to start the season thinking about it because you can't get yourself in a hole. No, you see him and his teammate through here. A lot of guys out on used tires from this morning and see the, the black line headed out of the last corner, kind of goes uphill through there, and the bike will get light. You see the front wheel. Coming off the ground, Josh also mentioned with him the age of 34, he's realized he's had to take better care of his body. And it's just huge. Once you get older, the recovery takes a little bit longer. Uh, you learn a lot more stuff on the racetrack, but uh, he's starting to notice those little bitty things and, and all that starts really adding up. And Josh is just riding really well this, this year too. And I, you know, last year, everywhere they went to, they started each Friday, you know, with zero data from the year before. Where this year, just it's a huge double difference that. showing up, getting d double and going back to where Josh was at last year. So you see Josh still out there. He's not at the top of the charts yet, but but you mentioned the fact he's on old tires from this morning right now. It's a long qualifying session, 40 minutes, and you certainly don't need 40 minutes to put in one quick lap. So these riders, these teams, everybody taking advantage of just this track time. Not just track time, but track time with the sun. The, the track is very different than what we had this morning. So this is all about learning. All about learning and, and also a lot of the, you know, we're talking about the, the Superbike guys using the harder option tires. So you'll see them out there early on trying to get a lot of laps. We've been talking about tire wear, you know, all morning. And it, there's the Superbike class. It's even bigger because of the horsepower. You see the number 40. This is Sean Dylan Kelly from Top Pro Racing coming back to the United States. This year, after spending two years over in Moto2, he was a super sport champion before he left to go to Europe and making the step up to Superbike for the first time this season with a brand new team. And there are a lot of questions that we asked each other uh, early on in the season when things kicked off at Road Atlanta. But a lot of those have been answered. You know, 
was the team up to this challenge? Well, I think that one, you can check that box. They've done nothing but give him a solid bike each and every time we go out to the racetrack. And then Sean, can he make that move up? And you've seen him be fast and you're quickest out on the racetrack right now in this qualifying session. So for Sean, he's answered that question as well. He's right there in the mix. Yeah, a couple of races, you know, didn't go the way they wanted. And that's just learning, going to the Superbike, not only for the rider, but the crew as well. That's huge. This could be a really good weekend, I think, for Sean, Dylan, Kelly, because we mentioned Moto America hasn't came here in, in 10 years. All the other tracks on Friday morning, the teams have data. Nobody had that data showing up here, and they had the test yesterday. So this could be a huge weekend for Sean starting on a level playing field. As we continue to watch Sean circulate around this racetrack, let's go down to pit lane with Michael. Yeah, just to add, uh, Roger there, of course, uh, talking, and quite rightly, uh, about the riders trying to get the laps in. We saw at the start of that session, Loris Baz uh, just ahead of his teammate uh, for Warhorse HSBK, Ducati, uh, Josh Herring. They're both circulating uh, together. Uh, Loris Baz has now pitted and uh, quite uh, animated down here in the pit lane, explaining to the team uh, that the front, he's got a feeling with the front where the front feels like it's going to fold. He's, he doesn't have a good feeling at all. So they are now working on the front of that machine, but uh, the, uh, the animations and certainly the hand gestures uh, would certainly indicate to me that he's got an issue with the front and he kind of nods his head. So, yeah, a little bit of work to do for the 76, but Heron looks good, doesn't he? Looks really, really good, as does uh, 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 Sean Dylan Kelly. And of course, Cam Peterson uh, getting more and more confident and uh, just building that confidence up after what was a big crash yesterday, Roger. But it is good to see the 45 uh, back on track as he now comes into that chicane through turn two into turn three. And uh, well, we're lucky because we may not have seen him, but the good news is we do. Yeah, and for Cam also getting banged up yesterday, you know, last night we had to go get x-rays and then you know you go back three weeks ago he was running and he hurt his knee something happened in his knee while he was running three weeks ago so i mean he's got a lot going on right now and a super bike is so hard to ride when you're not 100 percent, especially when you come to a track like meadow how where there's not a lot of rest and when you see these riders go through that infield section and changing directions you have a bad knee on one side and a bad ankle on the other it's a recipe for a long weekend you can see how full this racetrack is getting right now. And you can see the number 27. This is Ashton Yates flying the Honda flag here in the Superbike category. And he had a great weekend, didn't he, uh, the last time out at WeatherTech Raceway? Yeah, great weekend getting his first stock 1,000 win. It was really cool to see Ashton. He's been working really hard and having a really solid year, not only in Superbike, but stock 1,000 as well. I know his dad was tough to beat around middle house. So... Uh, if, he, if there's one person he can talk to about this track, he can go talk to his dad because he was almost unbeatable. Take a look at this replay, Roger. Yeah, the bike just gets light coming up over that hill, and then it goes down. So the bike's going to start to move around a little bit. A uh, lot of riders you'll notice at this track as well. We talked about tire wear sliding. There's a lot of movement on corner entry right here as well. This track kind of falls away, and then you can see there the rear end starting to step out a little bit go back towards the front this is the number one plate of jake gagne in defense of of that championship currently sitting second in the point standings 15 points behind josh herring he's one win this season five uh, times he's been able to to find himself on the podium he's consistently been able to score points each and every weekend but just hasn't been able to compete to his his highest level the last several rounds roger it all came down to that arm pump we've been off for four weeks and we know that he went in and, and had it looked at again. Yeah, and also his hand going to sleep as well was another problem he had, and he went to a specialist that a lot of the motocross guys go and use, a totally different doctor than, uh, you know, he's used before, and he, he's feeling pretty good so far this weekend. Uh, we'll see today after getting some laps on it yesterday, able to come in, and, and hopefully it's recovered enough to be strong this weekend. But as you mentioned, just not himself, uh, you know, battling for he can be there early on, early on in the race and practice and qualify well, but he just can't do the full race with the way his arm was. See Nolan Lampkin on the number 21. He's had a season of, of a couple of ups and downs. He's one of the riders that are competing in the Superbike Cup. And if you're new to this, this category of racing, so Superbike Cup, are the stock 1000 bikes that compete within the superbike category and there are a lot of things that they're able to gain from it one of them is getting the extra track time but another is being able to be out there with the riders on the actual full-blown superbikes yeah and you mentioned it just a little up and down but you know for nolan he's really made a huge step last year in his riding and puts himself in that 
that next group and, and you said it to be able to be out on track with you know guys like Sean Dillon Kelly Josh Heron you can just name the list each weekend yeah they're they're faster than he is but you try to latch on as long as possible and see what they're doing are they picking the bike up sooner than me on the throttle are they breaking deeper and you're able to get behind it and see what they're doing and you try to emulate that see Nolan with his leg out there's Cameron Peterson down on pit lane he has his helmet off right now let's get down to Michael yeah, Cam Peterson has come in on the uh, attack performance uh, Yamaha and uh, again he doesn't want to talk to us which is understandable we are in the middle of a qualifying session he's going to uh, continue uh, his debrief. Uh, Hayden Gillum has uh, also come in there's uh, looks like there's a gearing change uh, going on down here just where I am now standing yeah rear sprocket coming off news rear sprocket going on uh, on the same tire so uh, yeah early days in this session so just a little change there. Uh, ben Smith is uh, in here so too is JD Beach. Cambobier was and he's just gone back out. Uh, also, Josh Heron is down. Let's see if we can get a quick word very quickly uh, while all of these guys are in uh, the pit lane with uh, Ben Smith, if he'll have a chat to us. Ben, uh, of course, uh, I'm not sure you've you've ridden here in the past. It could be your first time here, but uh, how are you finding the circuit, uh, especially on one of these big bikes? Yeah, uh, first time here at this place. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's awesome seeing this many fans out too on a Friday, like you guys said earlier. Um, track is really neat. Honestly, we struggled a bit yesterday with setup just because we obviously don't have any notes coming into here and just, I don't know, find something that's going to get me comfortable. I think we're definitely making steps in the right direction, but um, yeah, we're just going to keep chipping away at it. I'm having fun. The team's doing a great job, so keep rolling. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, Ben. And yeah, Jamie, again, just looking at the timing screen, Sean Dillon Kelly st still sitting on top of the times. Josh Heron second, Jake Gagne in third, but it's all pretty quiet down here in the pit lane. A lot of riders are down there right now, and this is a little bit different, Roger, than what we saw during that Super Sport qualifying session. Maybe it's the little bit of extra time that they have here, but the riders have their helmets off. Certainly the crews are working on the bike, but they're spending more time on pit lane and not taking full advantage of all of the laps. And with Superbike as well, there's more adjustments that you're able to make and, and with the data and, and all that as well. So it takes a little bit longer to, to debrief. You have 10 extra minutes. So I think that's why you see them a little bit more relaxed, not as rushed, because there's so many different things that you're able to do on a Superbike. And you look down this grid here and over half the, uh, half the riders are in the pits right now. One rider that is not in the pits is Cameron Bobier there on that number six BMW. He is uh, still on personal best laps right now. So for Bobier, you know, he's one of the riders. There are 23 riders out of the almost 150 that are here this weekend. Only 23 of them had any race experience here uh, from 10 years ago when Moto America was last here at Mid-Ohio. But Bobier was one of them. He had a track record in the what is now the super sport category that was broken during qualifying earlier today if you're just joining us and for Bobier it's all about getting these laps and and continuing to to get himself in, in a better physical place after that injury earlier this season yeah and having all the weeks off from Laguna we see him do a 24 to this morning he did a 24 7 but he only did three laps and still led the session so I mean that has to give you a little bit of confidence when you go out and you only do three or four laps and you still end up on top and you know Cambodia the break that he's had to be able to come in and do some hit you know get healed up and also to be able to ride yesterday injury free and be able to get back to your his normal riding style his normal routine is going to be huge for Cam. You see that 124 255 that is now the time to beat with 23 minutes remaining in this first qualifying session for Steel Commander Superbike. You see all of the riders that are still on pit lane making those changes and debriefing with their teams. We're going to see some quicker times after this. Michael? Yeah, well, uh, a couple of uh, legends down here. I think it's probably the only way that we can describe them on the gentleman that you're looking at now on the right hand side, or you will be looking at, I think, in a second, is Araldo Ferracci. And uh, he is, of course, a huge part uh, of the Warhorse HSBK team. And the gentleman uh, just uh, to his left uh, is uh, Wayne Rainey. And, of course, uh, Wayne Rainey needs no introduction at all, does he? I'm going to see if I can just interrupt the gentleman with the white shirt on. That is the COO of Moto America, Mr. Chuck Axland. Just on the right hand side of these three jets is Josh Herring and he's just putting the helmet on. I just don't want to be too rude and interrupt them, but uh, I'm going to see if we can uh, interrupt. Geraldo has just uh, spotted me. You know, I'm going to see if I can uh, just come round and grab a quick word with Wayne. Sorry to interrupt you, gents. Geraldo, first, 
Nice to see you, sir. How are you? Good, very good, very good. We're just talking uh, about your boys, uh, Josh Herring and uh, Loris Baz. They're doing it. The track, then there's real good, and I'm glad that they're coming back on this track. Absolutely. No, I was just saying, we were talking on the TV about your boys, Josh Herring and Loris Baz. They're, they're doing a good job. Yeah, they, they try. They, they do the best that they can. Excellent. I'm gonna, if you don't mind, I'm going to have a quick word with Wayne. OK? Thank you very much. Let me come round this side, uh, Wayne, and get a quick word with you. Wayne, uh, of course, uh, it's great to see you uh, here. It's the first time I've had a chance to talk to you all season. We spoke a little bit earlier uh, about some of the historic races that have been here, and you were telling me some of the stories from, from yourself. Uh, it's so good to be back here, isn't it? Oh, it's great. It's great to be back here in mid-Ohio, especially in Ohio. I raced here in 1983 and 1986. I remember, in 80, and the reason why I remember both those races, because... I broke down leading the race in 83, and, and in uh, 1986, I was chasing Fred Merkel. He was getting away with from me, and I threw it away. So I remember those type races. Remember it maybe for the wrong reasons then, but uh, uh, let's talk very quickly before we get back up to Jamie and Roger as, as the climax of this session. Ten years of Moto America. You must be immensely proud of what you and, uh, and Wayne and, uh, sorry, you and, and Chuck and all the guys and, and girls have achieved. Yeah, ten years has flown by. When we first started Moto America, this was one of the key races that we wanted to attend, but the conditions of the track were uh, in, a, in a way that you couldn't ride when, when the track was wet. So uh, they finally repaved the track, and here we are, and I think uh, everybody's happy to be here. Uh, you know, the guys are going really fast. You can ride anywhere on the circuit. Uh, we're having a blast. Absolutely. I'll talk to you more in Mike on the mic on Sunday, but uh, for now I'm going to hand back up to Jamie and Roger. We're getting down to the crunch time here in this uh, Superbike qualifying session. Yes, we certainly are. It is, uh, it's great to see Wayne and Chuck and everybody back out here over the years. He mentioned 1983, Roger. There have been some big names at Mid-Ohio. Huge names in the crowd. Fred Merkel, I remember that guy when I was young. Bubba Schobert was one of my brother Nicky's legends. Doug Chandler. Uh, was a great rider as well, Colin Edwards. I mean, you can just go down the the list of riders who's been here. Mentioned Aaron Yates. He was so good at this track. Won a ton of races. See Matt McLeodin there, my brother Nicky down back in 01. Nicky's able to get the win. Him and Eric Bostrom had a heck of a race the next day. Look how close it was all the way throughout the race. And then Ben Spees as well was really good here. Miguel DeHaan, we'll see him. On the podium, Matt Maladin was able to get the win in, in 07. And then it was Josh Hayes. This is, was his coming out party right here. And then he went on the run. Blake Young, my brother Tommy won. That was my first ever podium with Blake Young. And then Josh Hayes, he was strong everywhere. But really at Mid Ohio, he was really tough to beat. You see there, one year he had a battle with Josh Heron. See Josh able to get the win. Martin Cardenas, you may remember that name. And Cam Bobier able to come here and talk about one of the guys that was here before and, and uh, Josh Hayes and, and myself. You look exactly the same, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> you take a look at that 10 years ago and you heard Wayne mention it there that the track was in a condition that it wasn't rideable when it got wet. But you think about the the commitment that Mid-Ohio has recently made to getting bikes back out here. And it's a perfect example of the if you build it, they will come. You see all the fans oh. that are out here on a Friday. That's a huge moment for Ashton Yates on that number 27 Honda. You saw him take that breath and put his head down. Yeah, that was coming out of turn three, trying to get the run onto the back straightaway and just used a little too much track there. That was a... That was a close call, you see. You know, he's going to go out. Most guys all use the curb, but his momentum just pushed him out further than he thought, and he got out in the grass, and that is not a place. Look at the black marks that that he's leaving. That was a pretty pretty incredible save. You can see, as you said, look, he looked down and had to take a deep breath. <laughs> you could see it. You see the team there. They were watching that also as they're, you know, walking away with smiles. That could have been very different, but he was able to save that one. That was a big moment. Big moment. And back to Middle Ohio, making the huge, you know, you know, investment and repaving the track. I mean, that's huge. And then there's other stuff they've made as well. Changed bathrooms. There's a scoring pylon in the back. They've moved, you know, different safety barriers and just made a lot of improvements for Middle Ohio to come back and, you know, all the fans wanted us to come back here and they've shown up this weekend and that's how you get us back. You show up to the races 
and uh, watch us put on a show. Yeah, and for the fans, they've also put in some you know covered picnic areas and, and places that you can get out of the sun for a moment and continue to watch the racing. It's right at the racing uh, line, so you're able to, to keep going and collect yourself in the shade. There's some great fan engagement areas over on in the infield, so a lot of fun things still to happen here this weekend. As you see, Josh Heron, and this number two Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati, he's on a quick lap. Yeah, really good lap. See if he can get down in the low 24s. Look at the rear end moving around. It's just the grip is going to be a struggle 24-7 for Josh. Not still a little bit off, but you know, kind of consistently able to put those little bit high 24s in, uh, like Sean. He's able to find just a little bit of pace in practice this morning uh, for Josh Heron. His, his best time was a 125.4, so he certainly is quicker than this morning. Yesterday was a 124.7, so we're getting into the range right now where he's putting in his best times of the weekend. And you talk about championship defense and being able to get up to speed. You certainly can't win a race from qualifying, but you can certainly put yourself in a better position for it. Make yourself your weekend way easier and middle Ohio is a tough track to pass so you know qualifying here is going to be really you know it's important everywhere but middle Ohio especially because it's just so difficult to be able to to make that pass we see sean dylan kelly goes out and does a little bit better lap there 24-4 so uh, you know we got a lot of riders in the 24s top five all within seven tenths so just under 16 minutes remaining in this first qualifying session for Steel Commander Superbike. Again, if you are watching along with us on the bonus coverage on YouTube, just a reminder, the only place you can watch every race live in its entirety is going to be on Moto America Live Plus. So this extra coverage isn't going to continue for the weekend, but you do get to watch this first qualifying session. Let's go back down to pit lane with Michael. Thanks, Jamie. Loris Baz currently in P5 in this uh, qualifying session. Of course, Loris's first time here at Mid-Ohio. Uh, enjoying it? Yeah, loving it. It's a really nice track. Uh, just the condition is a bit strange. Since yesterday, it's always changing one session to the other. So it's pretty hard to find a limit and also the tire life. But yeah, uh, guys from War Horse HSB are doing a good job. Like the V4 is working well here from the beginning. So yeah, I'm just trying to... Um, catch up on the pace I think like yeah Cameron and Josh have something more in the pace but we are not so fast so I just want to uh, yeah improve a little bit but we have to use this session like the mo the main qualifying in case it rains tomorrow so we will see but yeah I'm enjoying that place a lot you've been to a lot of circuits around the world a lot of experience uh, how does this place compare yeah it's a nice place it's uh, uh, shorter um, na more narrower than um, on the TV, it's a bit slower, but the elevation is much high, bigger than what I thought. And I'm enjoying it a lot. It reminds me uh, a little bit of the BSB track, and uh, yeah, that's really good for you. You just need, like, yeah, you need laps to understand the tracks and how to ride the bike. It's so easy to make a really quick mistake, but yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Excellent. We'll let you go uh, get back in the zone. And uh, well, we know how fast he was in BSB, we know how fast he was in World Superbike, and it looks as though uh, Loris Baz potentially is in the fight this weekend for a podium, Jamie. You wouldn't discount him, not at all. No, certainly not. And he's been such a welcome addition to the paddock for this full season, uh, Loris Baz. So look forward to him getting back out there and seeing what he can do. With the in closing 15 minutes of this qualifying session, as we go back out to the racetrack, you see that number 54 of Richie Escalante. Early on, we talked about this being his return weekend here to Superbike competition. He's been out since back at Road Atlanta, since the first round. There have been 11 races that have happened uh, without Richie aboard that bike. Chavi Forez was certainly a, a worthy fill-in for him and was able to continue developing that bike and, and keep it going for that entire program. But for Richie, he's got to get back up to speed now. Yeah, and, you know, pretty much the, after the first race of the year, he's been out. So you have to think all these other riders have improved their bike. They've been able to work with their crews all the all the races. So it's kind of it's really hard to jump in right now while everybody else is, uh, you know, at their peak performance of the year. You see Sean Dillon Sean Kelly Dillon. there, top of the board, 24-1. He's really starting to put in some consistent low 24s. A 124-1. Now the time to beat with 13 minutes remaining in this first qualifying session. And Loris Baz in that interview with Michael just brought up a great point in terms of the weather. They said they have to use this qualifying session as the main session because of that chance of rain for tomorrow. We know that uh, that certainly is a potential. Is it going to come during qualifying? Well, that's what we don't know. So you've got to be ready and have the time down today. Yeah, you know, you got to be able to, to put it in today. You can't wait till tomorrow. You never know. What's going to happen, it just puts another, you know, little stress on the teams and the crews. Not only they got tire wear and things like that, but you also have to monitor 
the weather, all that plays into effect. And Sean's looking good so far this weekend. And it's fun watching him ride. He just has so much talent. He's so smooth. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't even look like he's riding that hard, but he really is. No, he is certainly one of those riders, Roger, that makes it look easy. <laughs> You can tell how much fun he's having every time he's out there as we take a look at the number 69 of Hayden Gillum uh, currently being shown in the eighth position. We don't see Hayden out in Superbike each and every weekend, but he's always there inside the top 10 when he is. Yeah, and it's great to see the, the Honda out there and Hayden, he's really doing a great job. He's eighth really fast yesterday at the test, was in the top five a couple of the sessions. So for Hayden so far, it's been a, been a really good weekend there inside the, the top 10. We see Hayden compete in several of the categories in the Moto America Championship. And, you know, Stock 1000, he won the championship last year. So that's his, one of his main targets. So take a look at these photos. This was his time off. I mentioned earlier, four weeks. Yeah, the weekend after uh, Laguna Seca, he's able to go do a World Superbike race, which is an awesome opportunity for Hayden. He did well. His lap times were, were right there. And it's just so hard to jump in on a bike and tires that everybody else is mid-season and you have you know basically one practice session to figure it out before you start qualifying you can see that smile on his face when he was over there just like when he is over here as well he always uh, soaks in all of those all of those moments and, and carries them yeah it's just look at the crowd and it's just awesome to be able to be a world superbike rider for a weekend and be able to go experience that life and you know that crowd and that atmosphere you know you watch it on tv but it's uh, different when you're there. See J.D. Beach on the screen. He's had a kind of a busy last couple weeks there since we're doing filling in on the Essence and uh, racing team. Flat track. Dallas Daniels got hurt. Uh, that's where J.D. was racing at previous couple years. So they asked J.D. to come fill in. First race, he gets second. Then the next race, he wins. And then again, he won the Sturgis TT this past weekend. So for, for J.D., if he wins a flat track mile that's all he needs right now to get the full grand slam that's and amazing a, only a couple riders that ever did that you have to win a super bike race uh flat track short track half mile tt and a mile and that's what jd needs to complete it jd beach he had the weeks off and did not sit at home and train like a lot of the riders uh, did he went out and he did some racing so some great experience for him as well currently sitting seventh in, in the qualifying order right now in this full season superbike championship hunt for jd beach and it hasn't been an easy transition for him he's so, they're still looking for a little bit of comfortability there on that bmw for him yeah comfort and confidence i think they kind of go hand in hand and that's what jd has been looking for all year and i think going and doing those flat track races and getting a couple wins that could give him that momentum and, and that confidence, that little boost that he needs. He's seventh right now. He's a second and a half off. So he's he's getting a little bit closer each weekend, but it's just taking him a lot longer than he would like. And, you know, I know J.D. well. He's working tirelessly trying to get his way toward the front when he sees his teammate battling for wins. His teammate is Cameron Bobier under the same awning over there at, at, at Titler's Racing. So. For JD, so looking to get just a little bit closer. That was an improvement for him. A 125-1 moved himself up into six. So that's the second second row for him. That would be a, a better start than what we've seen at the last couple of races. So certainly finding a little bit here in this first qualifying session. And again, if you're watching with us in this bonus coverage on the Moto America YouTube channel, just a reminder that you're not going to get this bonus all weekend long. Moto America Live Plus is the only place where you can watch every qualifying session as well as each race and live and in its entirety is Moto America Live Plus. So you can go ahead and create your account over there and get yourself set up for the rest of the weekend. But we are happy to have you here this afternoon for the Steel Commander Superbike first qualifying. Ashton Yates moves into seventh. What a lap for, for Ashton there. 25-5. There's Cameron uh, Bobier on that number six. He went red in the first sector of the racetrack. He's being able to put together a lap right now, yellow in the second sector. So for Cameron Bobier, this could be an improving lap too as he chases Sean Dylan Kelly. Yeah, and has the best first sector. So right now it looks like he's a little over a tenth under Sean, Dilly's, Sean Dylan's lap time, which could be the first 23 of the week we see. 
is a 123-9 for Cameron Bobier, moving himself into that provisional pole position with seven and a half minutes remaining in this qualifying session. We are getting close to the track record here that was set back in 2008 by Ben Spees. Yeah, look at that. We talk about elevation, and that's at the top of some of the elevation, and that's what makes this track so tricky. The suspension gets light, the front end gets light, and you're trying to change directions for it. For Cam, we talk about how physical this track and how busy it is. You can see it. The bike's trying to wheelie everywhere. It's, it's moving around. It's a lot of work. I've seen Cam and Bobier do. You know, I don't have the official count, but he has certainly been out on the racetrack more, it seems, than the rest of the field, just taking advantage of all this track time. Yeah, it looks like he's on another good lap as well. This is where we see him have that wheelie in the replay. This lap a little bit different. Uh, maybe drugged the rear brake a little bit or, or rolled off the throttle to really too out of this little right-hander down through Thunder Valley. So he's not quicker than his better lap so far, but he's right there on it. Yeah, that second sector, he wasn't able to find any improvement. So you see that plus .005, that is uh, five thousandths that he's lacking right now to his own personal provisional pole time. So you can keep track of it that way as well, but he is consistently putting in these times now a 124.0 for Cameron Bobier. See Jake Gagne there inside the top four is kind of we've seen Jake this weekend. We talked about the you know getting the, the arm worked on and he's kind of been a little bit closer toward toward the front. One thing about Jake riding injured all year, you know, he hasn't been going race pace to work on that bike setup and find that extra distance. So, you know, he's a little bit behind right now. But one thing, Roger, I wonder about, you know, him not being, what we've seen from him the last several seasons is he's always out front. He's out front every single session, every single race. And, you know, that's how he's been able to dominate and win all of those championships back to back. But this year he's been in the mix and he's had to actually sit behind other riders and he's had, he's had the opportunity to study what it is that they're doing. That has to help you as a racer. Yeah, but for him to be able to, to follow other people and also see where he's stronger at for whenever he does have to race him, it's a different place than where Jake Gagne is used to. So uh, for Jake, it's just kind of been a year that he hasn't had in a while, so he's had to adjust a little bit. Speaking of having a good year, Bobby Fong, we just seen him on screen, unfortunately, had that crash at Laguna Seca, lost a lot of points, but Bobby has been incredible this year. Yeah, he was leading the championship point standings uh, at a couple of points this season. He's still right there in the hunt, sitting third, uh, 23 points behind Josh Heron coming into the racing here this weekend. A little bit further back in this qualifying session than what we have seen him the last couple of races, but you can see him with his head down and still trying to move through this field. Yeah, just struggling to find the setup and, you know, to get comfortable at this track. He's been pretty consistently outside the top 15. There. Look at the bike really really backing in there like a lot of engine braking so we'll see bobby this track is really hard whenever you really try to force it at this track you go slower because you start missing the mark so it's really hard to want to push but also be consistent and not make mistakes and he has said that uh, several points this season that he he's had to learn to not override everywhere he goes and that's when he's been able to find some, some success I also know coming into this weekend he hasn't been a hundred percent health wise he's been a little bit under the weather so not a hundred percent physically uh, at this point in the weekend yet and a track like this Roger what role would that play it plays huge and it could be hot as well you know the humidity here in Ohio being sick just missing a little bit and then you have that test yesterday too that burns a lot of energy as well going into the weekends we see the points how close they are at the top four bobby Plum there 23 points back that was a big hit that crash at laguna but whenever you're sick going into a race like this you got to kind of manage it your laps you know not it's it's hard it's hard to do that when you're eighth though because you want to do as many laps as possible to get the lap times you want. And he's not used to being eighth. He wants more out of it this season. He's already proven that he can win, having won twice this season with six different podium finishes for Bobby Fong. You take a look at our points leader again. This is Josh Hare, and we followed along with him a lot early on in this qualifying session. As things wrap up now, though, Josh is on some flyers. He's on a good lap, and his teammate as well, right there behind him. He pulls his teammate up on the front row with a 24-0. Great lap for Josh as well, his best lap of the week. Bass 
said they were still working on a couple of things. We saw that bike on pit lane with the crew doing just that and able to get himself up onto that provisional front row and what they think is going to be the most important qualifying session of the weekend. Certainly, we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but it was a great lap for Loris Baz. You see Josh Heron looking over his shoulder there, letting him go around him. We have two minutes and 22 seconds remaining. Now does Loris tow Josh? Yeah, that's the big thing. Josh towed him around, so now, you know, the Loris might let Josh. It might have had that plan going into let me follow you for a lap and vice versa. So we'll see uh, how the teammates play that out. The time that they're all chasing it is Cameron Bobier at 123.904. Two minutes left on the clock. We'll see if the Ducati teammates can get any closer. Loris Baz only 0.12 seconds behind right now. It is so incredibly close up front. We'll see what Josh Heron has. Yeah, I see JD Beach there off track. Looks like uh, not a crash, a mechanical. He's pr pulled it pretty far off, so I think he's not going to be able to try to get that back out there to get to the pits but it looks like loris bass is gonna let josh falling for a lap being told jd did just pull off of the racetrack on his own so kept it up on two wheels and parked it to round out this first qualifying session the ducati teammates though continuing to carry each other around the racetrack working together find just those last little tents. Like we said, you cannot win a race during qualifying, but if you get yourself up there on that front row, you talk about how difficult it is to pass here, Roger. That's going to be big for the weekend's races. Yeah, and Josh Heron just went through the first sector, red, 33-1, so he's on a good lap. Out broke himself a little bit down into turn six, but he's recovered well. He also came across the speed trap uh, going into that first sector at 181.6 miles per hour for Josh Heron, the fastest rider out there on the racetrack as well with that toe from his teammate right in front of him. Yeah, and he's at the part of the track as well. Through here, it's almost a little bit easier when you're following somebody because you can kind of use him as a gauge. His teammates pulled off though, so he's out there doing it on his own and he's lost a couple tenths. And you can see there that he is three tenths um, ahead of or below the the pole time. So it doesn't look like he's going to be able to put that lap together the way it looked like it was going to set up to do. We'll see what he can find in this third sector. But three tenths is, is quite a bit. A 124.5 for Josh Heron on, on that lap. Yeah, and you can just see he's really chasing grit now at this point of the point of the session. So, you know, Josh has been consistent, but he definitely doesn't want to find himself in the, in the second row. The checkered flag is flown for this first qualifying session. And Josh was able to cross the start finish line with a second still on the clock. So he'll get to finish out this lap at speed if he chooses to. But you said it, he's already struggling for some grip. Yeah, it looks like he's just looking around. But, you know, Josh has did a lot of fast laps. And I think, you know, you, you want to qualify on that front row, you got to take the positives. And for Josh, he might not have the outright speed today, but he has the consistency. What a great qualifying session for his teammate, for Loris Baz being there in second first time here to mid-ohio and you know it's the first time for a lot of these riders but but for loris especially to be able to get out there and get up to speed it's, it's a great qualifying great qualifying and having a test on on you know yesterday would be huge for loris as well to be able to really try some stuff it's hard on race weekends to make a lot of changes because you know you only have 40 minutes and you don't want to make the wrong change and lose track time so i think yesterday able to have a full day to make some changes will be huge for loris Brandon Posh also sixth. He's having a good weekend so far. Fifth this morning, sixth in this session. So that's the best weekend we've seen him on the Superbike. You see the checkered flag there at the start sand. There's the Permco Superbikes at Mid-Ohio. The first time Superbikes returning here to the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course over for 10 years of coming after the repave that the track put in last fall and setting things up for two wheels to be able to get out here and get up to speed and have some great racing. We've had great qualifying sessions so far. You know, another new thing for the 2024 season. It is the Tom Duma Fine Jewelers of Ohio producing custom championship rings and pendants for the Moto America Champions and Steel Commander Superbike, Mission King of the Baggers, Super Sport, and the Mission Mini Cup by Motul Classes. Tom will work with each of the champions to choose from several different designs, all with a retail value between $12,000 and $15,000. 
I had a chance to talk with Tom a little bit earlier today and go through the process of creating those rings, and it is truly just a great way to celebrate a championship season. Just take a look at the qualifying results here. Uh, everyone chasing Cameron Bobier, that 123.9, a tremendous lap for him. Loris Baz in second, and then Sean Dillon Kelly, Roger, rounding out that front row. And look at Josh Heron right there in fourth, only three tenths by then Jake Gagne, Brendan Potts, J.D. Beat seven, Cam Peterson, Bobby Fong, and Ashton Yates rounding out the top ten. Good session for Ashton Yates as well. You see Hayden Gillen there in 11th, Richie Escalante and his first race weekend back down in 12th. Yeah, Benjamin Smith, Nolan Lampkin, Ezra Bobier, Danella Lewis, 16th, Max Flinders, Alex Aringo, and Tony Blackall there, 19th. Cool to see Tony back racing this weekend. Used to do Super Sport and Superbike this weekend. We have 19 total riders here for the Steel Commander Superbike category. We'll have another qualifying session tomorrow, but Roger, let's start off uh, with Sean Dillon Kelly here in this first session. Sean looks great, consistency. He's at the top of the board toward the top, every lap, every session from start to finish, able to put those consistent laps in, and Sean's gonna be a threat for these guys this weekend. They're on that provisional front row, and take a look at the Boris Baz, it's number 76. I think this might be his best qualifying this season. Yeah, best qualifying for Loris, and I think he's got to be pretty happy with that. You know, he kind of followed his teammate there, but for Loris to be able to put that really good lap in, looked like at the beginning of the session, it was a little uncomfortable, and uh, looks like they got that sorted out. Taking that breather on pit lane, and great lap, but Cameron Bobier being able to go to the top of the charts, that 123.9, that's impressive. It's been impressive, and, and Cam Bobier every session finds himself toward the top and uh, you know he's the one with the target on his back after the first day in the first qualifier way sees he's the one to beat let's go ahead and get down to pit lane michael hill is still standing by and we talked about this great qualifying session for brandon posh michael yeah, great qualifying session. Front row, of course, at the moment is uh, Cam Bobier, Loris Baz and Sean Dylan Kelly. But uh, Top Suzuki currently on the second row of the grid for Brandon Pash. And uh, Brandon, that's more like it. Yeah, yeah, we've been looking for this all season and it's finally starting to come together. This is the second time in two races that we're uh, in the top six and at least in the first queue this weekend. So um, it's good for us. We need to be up there a little bit more often and uh, front three are going pretty quick, but we're going to do our best tomorrow to kind of close that gap. And uh, if it's random, we're still going to send it pretty hard. So should be a good weekend. I was going to say, you just kind of alluded to it there. If it does rain overnight, if it's wet tomorrow, you are going to be on the second row of the grid. How important was getting that lap in towards the end of that session? Uh, yeah, super important, because if we don't get a dry queue tomorrow, we have no chance to improve. So uh, we really wanted to be first or second row, uh, no farther back than that. So achieved the first part of our goal, and then we'll see how tomorrow goes. And hopefully, uh, if it does rain, find a good rain setup and be at the front. So. Excellent stuff. Brandon Pash then reminding us all just how fast he is. Great to see the Vision Wheel M4 XR Suzuki on the provisional second row of the grid. Still lots more to come from mid-Ohio. Up next, it is the first qualifying session for Junior Cup. Don't go anywhere. Moto America Live Plus continues after this short break. <laughs> 